We are going to get into some new territory again today with Kali Fontania. She uh, is a firebrand, been out there quite outspoken. You can follow her YouTube at Real Kali, excuse me, K A L I. Fontania is F O N T A N I L L A. Also, to thinkexodus.org. She'll tell you more about that. Uh, this should be a very interesting conversation. She was formerly a public high school teacher, 15 years, now runs homeschooling homeschools, um, and has some very strong opinions about her experience having been in the um, educational system, particularly in this in the great state of California, which, guess what, uh, is a little problematic. Uh, we have lots of great guests coming up. I'll tell you about that after the break. Uh, we'll bring Kali in here in just a second, so stay with us. Our laws, as it pertain to substances, are draconian and bizarre. The psychopaths start this way. He was an alcoholic. Because of social media and pornography, PTSD, love addiction, fentanyl and heroin, ridiculous <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a doctor for <laughs> sake. Where the hell do you think I learned that? I'm just saying, you go to treatment before you kill people. I am a clinician. I observe things about these chemicals. Let's just deal with what's real. We used to get these calls on Loveline all the time. Educate adolescents and to prevent and to treat. If you have trouble, you can't stop and you want to help stop it, I can help. I got a lot to say. I got a lot more to say. Let's talk about aging because everyone wants to know how to slow it down. For almost a decade, I've been taking a healthy aging supplement called True Niagen. This supplement boosts NAD. That's something that cells can't live without. It's done with a patented form of nicotinamide riboside called NR or Niagen. It's more efficient and more scientifically reviewed than NMN or other NAD boosters. True Niagen is truly the best way to boost NAD levels. And it's made by Chromadex. They are the gold standard in the NAD space. Dr. Charles Brenner, the scientist who discovered the NAD boosting potential of NR, explains. And the center of the metabolism that allows the conversion of food into energy is NAD coenzymes. And NAD gets disturbed um, in the aging process. And as we're exposed to conditions of metabolic stress, mm. niogen, which is the... Um, form of, of NR that was developed by Chromadex is the, is the best and the only fully legal form of NR. And this is really the gold standard for NAD boosting uh, vitamins. I love this product. I urge you to try it. Go to drdrew.com slash true for 20% off your order. That is drdrew.com slash true niagen, T-R-U-N-I-A-G-E-N, and enter Dr. Drew at checkout, D-R-D-R-E-W, Enter it at the checkout for 20% off. You asked for it, and the wellness company has delivered. The medical emergency kit, replete with ivermectin, prescription antibiotics, and more, continues to fly off the shelves. We keep one here at home. And there are three new kits you need to know about, and more are coming. The Contagion emergency kit was inspired by the high demand for the medical kits. In that Contagion kit, you'll find ivermectin, hydroxychloroquine, antibiotics, budesonide, and a nebulizer. And a must for your next trip is the travel emergency kit, something I made sure exactly what I give my patients is in this kit and some more. The kit includes remedies for jet lag, variety of infections, even GI ailments. Imagine your flight getting grounded anywhere, say even in the U.S., and you start getting sick. You do not want to be at the mercy of the U.S. healthcare system or any healthcare system. At home, we keep the ultimate first aid kit on hand. It has over 20 essential supplies and medications for situations when time is of the essence. Order one for your car and your go bag. Because these kits contain prescriptions, your purchase includes a telemedicine consultation as well as an instruction manual. Go to doctor.com slash TWC for 10% off. That is drdrew.com slash TWC for 10% off all your orders. I'm very excited about these kits. Go to drdrew.com slash TWC. And so before I bring Kali in here, just a reminder of the upcoming shows. Greg Lukianoff coming in on Tuesday at our usual time. Wednesday, Peter McCullough makes a, a command performance. We haven't talked to him in a while on this show, though I've been in communication with him. Drea DiMatteo from uh, the... Um, the Sopranos will be here. She's uh, got some interesting, uh, uh, she's been a little outspoken lately. G. Van Fleet, Ed Dow with Kelly Victory. You've got a lot coming up. There have been some uh, 
Desmet, uh, Matthias Desmet has been tossed around today as somebody who's, we're putting on the schedule. So this is a great, great, great guest on our way. And as I always say, today is no exception. Uh, Kali Fontania, former public school teacher, the ex- thinkexodus.org, as you can find some of her materials. Uh, she is at Real Kali Fontania, where you can get her information. And in addition to homeschooling and the shortfallings in the public education, we're going to talk a little bit about TikTok and its effect on young people. So generally, we want to kind of talk about what is influencing young minds today. Please welcome Kali Fontania. Welcome. Hello, Dr. Drew. You were influencing you my, young, my young mind when I was a teenager. You are like a lullaby I, I hope- in your voice. <laughs> I listened putting to people love to sleep. Wine. I was a love putting people to sleep listener. for years. No, I, yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, when I, I so KOME funny. in California, I was listening to Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla on Loveline every single night, yeah. falling asleep to your voice. So if I fall asleep during this, so, just uh, it's my fault. I understand. Yes. <laughs> uh, but but KOME uh, KOME was our second or third affiliate. We we at yep. one time were I just know. in California. That's yep. the San Jose station that, that mm-hmm. serves uh, that greater area, including some of San Francisco. And um, it was K ninety one X in San Diego. It was K Rock in Los Angeles, and then KOME up there. And um, Oh, I always I always screw up his name. Uh, who the host of the Voice? So everyone, help me, guys. Um, Carson Carson Daly. Oh, Carson yeah, Daly yeah. was a was a disc jockey up there. Do you remember that when the afternoons? And uh, I went up there like the first week or two he was on the air ever, and I was his first on air guest. And uh, everyone now knows who Carson Daly is. <laughs> But uh, KOME had a big impact. It was one of those ori- original alternative radio stations um, from changed back in my the day. Life. So, but anyway, my whole course, <laughs> my whole course in life was changed. Really? When I tuned into KOME. Yes. Tell me how? It why? K- it was either KDON or KOME, and I was either going to go the rap route, the pop route, or like the alternative rock route. And when I was twelve years old, I tuned into KOME and. The rest is history. <laughs> Isn't that that's really interesting? You know, you know, yeah. people don't appreciate how much radio impacted people's young people's experience. It, it, it was oh, how yeah. you defined yourself, mm-hmm. and and your story is really kind of a good example. Of this right, you, these are two different cultures, and you attach yourself to one, define yourself by one. And and you know you your friends would listen to the same radio station. You'd th- you'd go to the events by the same radio station. In fact, uh, Susan, you went to an event at uh, the, there's an outdoor stadium there that KOME used to have a big uh, concert festival at every spring, right? Uh, San Jose. Uh, the kids came with us when they were little, remember? And they came out, and Adam Adam announced that they were the Hansons coming out to play. <laughs> so, oh my gosh! <laughs> so, well, right, this is where we're going back in history. All right, so to, to talk about your experience in the public system, what happened, what your story is, people that haven't heard it, and and where you are now. Yeah, I am a former public school teacher of 15 years. So I taught my own generation, millennials, and then I switched to teaching Gen Z. And uh, millennials, they were were interesting to teach my own generation. And then Gen Z, they're very moldable. That I think that's the reason why there's so much censorship is Gen Z is, is you, when they know the truth, they're very on fire for it. But when you give them a bunch of false craziness, those kids are also on fire for that. So um, yeah, I yeah, I loved what I did. I taught the English learners and the students that were behind in reading. And I started seeing a lot of the indoctrination that's happening in our public schools. And I decided to expose it the last two years I was teaching. And I also taught during the pandemic. So I was teaching online for a year and two months. I mean, I still have cellulite I'm trying to get rid of from sitting for a year and two months. I mean, it was damaging what they did to shut down our school, shutting down our schools. And yes. um, oh, for I was sure. always a very, predictably. I was always a, yes, I was always a very active teacher too. And so to sit for yeah. a year and two months was, was tough. And um, mm. yeah, and I decided to leave my tenure teaching position and really expose what's going on. I was, at first I was doing it anonymously. I was sharing less, lessons that contained critical race theory and lessons that were pro-Black Lives Matter, and I was sharing all of this kind of stuff that's happening in our public schools. 
and that was not academics, right? <laughs> like, let's make sure kids know how to read and write before they learn how to hate white people. That's, <laughs> But anyways, so I was exposing these lessons, and then I decided to do it more publicly and share my voice and quit my tenure teaching position, and that's the rest is history. Did, did you have sort of an aha moment? Was there, because there's a, um, we have a friend, uh, Kira Davis, who has a very similar story. I used to, I used to interview her on when I had a radio show back in the day, daytime radio show. And uh, she said she was teaching, taught for years in Michigan. And she told me that one time she was sitting there with a group of kids going, you know, going, you, you can do anything you want, but oh yeah, you kids, you're, you're yeah you're you're African American male so it's that's all stacked against so you have no hope and then she like a light went out she goes what am I doing why am I telling them this and is that <laughs> true and she started examining it and she went completely a different direction like much like yourself but did you have one of those sort of moments where it was like wait a minute or did it was it a grinding slow awareness it was grinding I would say the first time I really was aware that there that something that things are switching is when I was in a staff meeting. And there was a white male teacher that stood up and claimed his white privilege. And I was like, what is this? <laughs> I'm like, I, what, you know, and then I had this other black female coworker talk about microaggressions and how we need to treat, you know, students differently based on the color of their skin. And, and I was like, uh, my first job was in Compton, California. I don't mess around when it comes to my students. I have very high standards. I am not trying to lower the standards for black kids. They don't need it. And then, and then I received a gift for being a black teacher, and that was that was really where I was like, okay, this is this is getting ridiculous. Um, the gift was getting, goes right getting after getting weird. Yes, getting weird. Was right, sounds, it, sounds weird, weird, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I was right after the George Floyd riots. I received an email from my superintendent saying there was a gift for black teachers, and I'm like, what is this? Mm -hmm. So I went and picked up the gift because we were still teaching online. And it had a Black Educators Matter mask in it and had an I Love Being Black sticker. It had a, the ancient greeting of Otep. It was greeting me in the ancient greeting of Otep saying the God in me is the God in you or whatever. Um, it had a Africa symbol with a Black Power fist on the on the tag on the pack. And I'm like, I'm from Jamaica. Like, I don't, you know, <laughs> maybe you can trace my ancestry to Africa, but I'm Jamaican, right? Yeah. And it's like, it's like giving you know, all Asians, a, a Chinese flag or something, you know, it's just, it was really <laughs> silly. And I was like, and then when I rejected the gift and I started exposing it online, because I was sharing this, I said, you guys, I got this. It's like a racist gift basket. I don't know if you know that comedian who gave it. It, it does sound racist. It, it yeah. sounds, it sounds racist. And also it sounds racist and racially sort of like patronizing. Totally for the very reason you're pointing out. Yeah. Totally yeah. patronizing. I would rather be recognized for my merit as a teacher. I was working, I worked sure. for that district for five years and I did a lot of great work with my students and to be singled out for the color of my skin. And when you don't accept it, then you get treated terribly. I'm like, how does this work? You know, you guys are going to persecute the black woman for not wanting the black gift or whatever. It's just silly. <sighs> and so there was that. And then there was the lessons that were being given to my students. And then there was the lockdowns and making us teach in masks when we finally came back. The plexiglass. The Do you want to tell high schoolers that they have to work walk a certain way on the in the hallways because of social distancing? I don't want to do that. I don't like micromanaging yeah. my students. And it was just this weird no. environment that they were bringing us back into. And then there was also pressure to get the vaccine. I, I, I would. So, so, I so it's interesting yeah. to me that you, <laughs> you, you lump this all together. That's interesting. And so, so it's, it's funny. I sort of lump it all together that way when it comes to sort of medicine and the excesses, how do you understand what was happening initially? And then it seems like you relate it to what happened all the way across COVID. What, what was going on? What, what is your understanding of your, your sense of what that all was? Well, I warned my students when I first, when COVID first, the rumor started happening because we didn't even have a single case in our city yet when they shut down our schools. And I was like, we've had other viruses hit our country. Remember Zika, like the shrunken head kids? Mm -hmm. There was mm -hmm. the, the swine flu that was actually affecting children. I mean, when kids got swine mm -hmm. flu, they were getting diarrhea and so, vomiting. Well, and, and then H1N1 was killing young people, killed 300,000 yes, young people. Exactly. Exactly, exactly. And so I told my students, I was like, this is not a normal reaction. 
we have not had this type of reaction before for a disease. I mean, we've always had mysterious diseases that have hit our country. We live in a yeah. we live in a fallen yeah. world. Our world is full of disease, all right? And this reaction was so like I, I I've never seen anything like it before. And we don't shut down our right. schools. So what, school, what did you what did you yeah. think as as it, as it was evolving? What did you think was happening? What was what was your oh, thought I process? Where, where did you imagine a, this was coming yeah. from? I I think it was per, per, I I immediately smelled something because you know we it was the twenty it was an election year, and I, and I was like okay so something's going on they're trying to collapse the economy and the other thing that was so fishy for me was the closing of the schools because we don't close our schools we love having our children in these government schools I mean we had we had a gas leak at my high, at one of my schools that I worked at and they didn't shut down we had the bathrooms get shut down. And they brought in porta potties. This is when I was working in a middle mm -hmm. school. And they brought in porta potties for us to use a porta potties in the middle schools. And they didn't shut down the schools. I mean, it would be, yeah. it was like a miracle if we did get shut down. It was like, okay, thank God we have a half a day off because there was, you know, some sort of crazy incident or maybe a kid committed suicide. You know, that was like maybe the one time yes. I saw a school shut down was to give kids chance to mourn. And, but but let, let's let's take that in for a second. I, I think yeah. that's absolutely true. You're you're not speaking hyperbolically. You're saying no. that this is a this is some sort of paradigm shift, some some sort of quantum leap literally in what what somebody was doing or what happened here with that I don't know how we understand it. Um, and I've always said, I tell the story constantly of um, watching the Ukrainian wom women and the children coming into Poland at the, as the Ukrainian war broke out. And the women were all complaining that the kids have been out of school for two weeks. And it's two weeks. You've got to do something. And, and we did it for two years in California. It, it's just such, I don't think, your point is really interesting to me because I don't think we've let that really sink in with the kind of astonishment that we should, that this doesn't happen. And you did it without without a thought, without any a care for what the consequences would be, seemingly. And two years for a young person is like 20 oh. years for someone that's older. Oh, for sure. I mean, these kids, for sure. the, the seniors that year did not have a proper graduation. We had drive-by graduations where the kids were in cars. And um, it was it was the psychological, like, mind mind crap they did to these children f yeah yes exactly the mind f they yeah did, they did to yeah. these children was it's criminal yeah. criminal and the ones that really well, bought into it, yeah the, the 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 kids that really bought into it they'll never be the same they'll never imagine thinking that the way you breathe breathing just going outside you're going to kill an older elderly person that's the type and of forget it, only person if you don't yeah. if you don't in, in in this city you were told to shelter in place or you're yes. going to kill your family yes kill your family exactly. exactly and and in the face of all that stress for that you know middle adolescent age group particularly what they need is their peers no isolate from your peers and then how about developing the brain no we're not going to do that either for a couple of years so i it's so predictable how profound the outcome would be and if you were speaking against it or you were saying, warning about it, you were silenced. I mean, I was sitting in staff meetings where the teachers were so dramatic. They did not want to open the school. So there was pressure from parents that were, the parents were like, okay, it's time to open. It's It's been six, seven, eight months. My students, are there, there's learning loss happening. We're seeing the, the effects of it already. And the teachers and these staff meetings were like, I don't want to die. And if you open up the school, I'm going to die. And I, I mean, I, I'm listening. I'm literally listening to this. And then my district, they offered an extra $200 to teachers to come back to work. And guess what? That's those same teachers every single day, $200 every single day to come back to work. Wow. And um, wow. California teachers are already paid pretty well, by the way. And that's, that's you know, teachers complaining about salaries. Not California, I would say they're, it's almost too, too much. Um. Anyway, so these teachers, they were willing to come back for money. The ones that thought they were going to die for coming back, they all signed up to get that extra $200 a day to open up the to open up the classroom for the last like 2 months of the year. I think it was the last like 10 weeks they decided to open. And it was just I don't know, it was like the twilight zone. That's I can't even during it, that time in California, but, but, it was 
bizarre. Yeah. Oh no, it was wild. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm with you. But but for for me, as it was breaking out, I I thought it was the press. I thought the press was making. Uh, they they were so already hysteria prone during the whole Trump administration that I felt like, oh, this is just more of that. And they're doing it to try to capture eyes and make money. And they're getting people, they're hurting people. They're getting them upset. I never imagined that the government was involved, the public health sector would get involved. I I, I that to me was a surprise. What what did you it, what did you think at the beginning? Who did you just think this was politics did you think it was government run amok did you think it was this teachers union trying to get the two hundred dollars what, what, what did you did you have thoughts oh yeah i thought it was all planned it was all it was all planned well you know i'm i'm a christian and and there's this one guy that i follow that you know there's certain people that are kind of in tune with what's about to happen and those are really good people mm. to pay attention to right now and this one guy was warning about a global pandemic and that they were going to use it to control us and take away our freedom. And I and I remember hearing about mm. that like eight or nine years ago. This was a while. I've been listening to this guy for a while. Anyways, um, he was saying that there, you know, there was this conference in Germany where they planned it. What's going to what are we going to do if a, there's a global pandemic? Because have we ever even had a global pandemic in modern time where they were? The yes, whole we have. Yeah, exactly. No, yes, we but have, we yeah. but you don't know. No one yeah, knows about, know about it, it. because yeah, that's what the, that's what they did with it. There was yes, one during exactly. the Obama administration. Yes, the yes. H1N1 was a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. what I kept saying was we just had one 10 years ago. I got that illness. It was terrible. Yeah, and it killed yeah. young people, not old mm -hmm. people, young people. And no one knew it happened because I thought the Obama administration did a good job with it. They kind of managed it, let the public health deal with it. And they, they advised us as physicians what to do. And the world had a pandemic and it came and it went and we went about our business. Why we go from that to this, where we were with this one, was just well, it it it's disgusting, frankly. It, it was just disgusting, uh, and yeah. uh, it, it was partly to. I mean, there was a many many forces at work. Part of it was the event two hundred one and the planning and the fact that there's armies of people now that the, whose job is pandemic preparedness. They're hammers walking around looking for a nail. And trust me, when that nail popped up, they started slamming things down. And uh, there we were. The, the only thing I don't know in retrospect, and I've brought this up a number of times is, and I've asked this of a few people that are kind of in the know in the intelligence community, is it possible that there was something about this virus that they knew it was produced in a bioweapon sort of fashion, and they were worried it was going to have more consequence than they were letting on or that it could morph. It was designed in such a way they could have neurological consequences downstream or mutate into something more serious later. I, I That's still, still a question that remains unanswered for me because then their behavior seems like, okay, well, they were desperate and they were trying to do what they could. And they really had some very, very, very serious concerns about what could happen here. But so far, no one has told me that. So... Well, it's just crazy to me that they're even experimenting with these vaccines like that. Because you really don't know how well, they're going course. to affect uh, different uh, persons. Of course. Populations. Yes, ma'am. And yes, ma'am. And, and the other thing is the movie Contagion. I don't have you seen that movie? So that was predictive it's, programming. It yeah, it's it's it follows along the COVID narrative almost perfectly. It originates in China. They said it came from animals, right? Came from a bat. And they had, and then there's these terms that I've never heard before in Contagion that we now are very familiar with. Terms like social distancing. Mm. It's in the movie Contagion. Wearing a mask in the movie Contagion. There's a there is a um, there's a conspiracy theorist guy that goes viral who speaks against the vaccine, and he ends up getting arrested, and he's exposed as a fraud. Right. So this is all in this movie Contagion that came out, I think, in 2011 or somewhere, but definitely before the pandemic. So there's they were they were gearing us up for this. They were they were getting us ready. Susan, we have some homework to do. We got to go watch. Yes, you, I know, you, you heard about that. I know. <laughs> I heard it. about it. Yeah. And yeah. Teacher's giving us some homework. Uh, so, <laughs> it's good. It's so, watching a movie. That's good homework. <laughs> So, so there's this, there's where you started and you gave up your position and what happened? You ended up working on homeschooling. How did that all happen for you? I am still, I mean, you have to, 
I'm still upset that I'm not a public school teacher right now. In fact, I went into a little bit of a depression last year just because I miss it so much. And I'm trying to find who I am again because I was in front of mm. students for 15 years, like, and this very competent teacher, right? And then all of a sudden I lost that. Mm. And I'm like, where's where's that girl? I don't know where she is. Like, <laughs> but no, luckily, I know what you mean. Yeah. When, when, yes. you're, when, you're, when your identity and your worth and your meaning is all tied up in your profession and somebody does something to it, that's no good. That's not fair. But but on the, but Absolutely I'm I'm good. guessing, and I'll, I'm going to predict, going to predict that somebody like you will will find some other creative growth where you one day will go. Well, I'm glad that happened after all. Yeah, I you will. I I ended up opening my own school with my husband. So we have Exodus Institute, which is a K through 12 online school. Surprisingly, I learned how to teach online. So there was something that's good mm. that came out of that. There's a lot of parents that want to pull their kids from public school, but they don't want to be their homeschool teacher. They don't want right. that relationship with their child. And so we, we, we're meeting that gap and we're teachers that you can trust. And we're, um, we have, we're fully accredited. We have about 180 students right now. My problem is I'm not a businesswoman and I'm not a saleswoman. And that's where I'm, I'm learning how to do all of that myself. But I, and that's, a, mm -hmm. that's something that should be taught in our schools. We should be learning how mm -hmm. to do, be entrepreneurs and how to open up our own businesses mm -hmm. and how to tax law and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But they don't teach that in public school, right? But um, no, it's been not. a learning learning process to open my own school. But it's not the same as being in the classroom every single day. And then I um, I just do a lot of stuff on social media. I have a fairly decent following, although I've been banned and censored all this whole time, this last three years, banned nine times on TikTok, full accounts erased nine times. Um, I just what? got censored. For what? Full, full, oh, um, so since I've been exposing Black Lives Matter, um, the movement, and I've been exposing critical race theory, I get racist comments. So I get racist comments all the time from the left. So they call me a C O O N, a house N word, a bed mm. wench, a um, that I hate myself uh, all the time. And so I share these comments, and I get mm. violations for sharing the comments. <laughs> so I'll get yeah, my I'm videos taken down for hate speech, even though they're allowed to call me. I don't even say the words, and I'll even black them out, but they take them down, take down my videos. So I was getting banned a lot for that. And then um, also sharing anything to do with COVID. Immediately, videos get taken down and um, exposing, uh, you know, just exposing what's going on in our public schools with all of the agendas that are happening. And I've just been censored nonstop. And, and that's very frustrating because my business is directly connected to social media. And I think that's what a lot of people are worrying about with this TikTok ban it, is that some people, that's their whole livelihood. <laughs> Yes. And, and yeah. We, yeah, our son makes money on it. You know, he, yeah. he represents tech, tech influencers and I'm, you know, it, it, that's worrisome. So I have a, now a million questions, uh, in, including, <laughs> uh, Caleb, do you want to, do you want to ring in on the, I don't like what the it. experience was like, like being homeschooled talk. with, with a, I think you had something like a collie, did you not? Well, so actually, no. So that's, I had assumed that she was a homeschool mom, but whenever she started uh, talking about this, this is very different from the homeschooling that I was brought up in. I was homeschooled K through mm -hmm. 12. Uh, my mother was my teacher. And if there were subjects that she didn't agree with, then she would alter those subjects, especially with history, science. <laughs> and, you know, it was, it was a very different homeschooling back then than what she's talking about. This is a lot more legit. Now I turned out fine. Yeah. Like I, I did, I, you yeah. know, did a couple well, of years of college and, you know, yeah, right. Drew Rath, thanks, thanks. <laughs> but, you know, I turned out okay, but still it's a, uh, my experience was very different than the one she's describing. And this is kind of, I, I guess what she's describing is, uh, this seems so much more legitimate than what I grew up in. Yeah, it just really seems yeah, like, yeah. We should call it, it neo. We should call it neo homeschool because yeah, it's yeah. so different yeah, than yeah. Like the neo yeah. homeschool movement. It's like a, <laughs> almost hybrid, where it's like you seem to have accredited professionals yeah. that come in, and I, you know, I never even thought mm -hmm. of the idea of what. Well, what is that dynamic? What would the dynamic with my mother be like these days if my mother hadn't also been mm. my teacher for so many years? Mm. I had never even thought of that until she just brought that up about how some parents don't want to have that parent that that teacher child relationship. They want to be the parent, 
And I, I wonder what my relationship would be like if we had had other teachers, even, but it would give the same control to my parents that they had wanted from homeschooling and the same safety that you would get from not having to go to schools that are, you know, increasingly unsafe with the violence and, and everything. Mm. I, is, is your husband a teacher also? Yeah, my husband is a former English yeah. high school teacher. So and, we're both. And and do you have do you have a whole faculty, or is it two of you doing the whole thing, or how does that work? Oh gosh, I no, there's no way we could do it because it's K through twelve, yeah. K through twelve, okay. and we have so yes, we have teachers that teach that. We actually teach the enrichment program, which is called Young Patriots Academy, and that is mm. lessons that counter the left, and I call it truth. Hmm. So lessons like the true history of slavery. Lessons like um, what happened in Venezuela, where I talk about the dangers of socialism, and very objective, very just here's the facts, but I want you guys to critically think this through. I just recorded a lesson on the Quakers and their role in helping to abolish slavery in America. This is mm -hmm. stuff that they are, mm -hmm. kids are not getting in public schools because there's narratives they're mm -hmm. trying to push on these children to make them hate America. And so when you learn about the Quakers and the fact that there was these people that spent time in prison for helping black slaves escape from their slave owners. These are white Quakers sacrificing their freedom to help black people. It, it kind of messes up the narrative, right? <laughs> that it's all, right, that all right. white people have white privilege and they're, you know, and so, um, you know, like, like what about the descendants of Quakers? Do they get some reparations because they were, because <laughs> they were affected by the slave trade and the, you know, slavery mm -hmm. in America? So, um, yeah, lessons that counter the left and our, our um, Young Patriots Academy, which is an enrichment program, is only $29 a month. And that's for parents that oh, want to wow. pull their, oh, yeah, wow. that's for parents that want to make sure their child is ready before they go into college. I've had a lot of parents where do they contact go? me. That's it. Think where do they Exodus. go to get that? Uh, they could go to youngpatriotsacademy.com or thinkexodus.org. It's on both of them, but youngpatriotsacademy.com. That's for the enrichment. And we just rebranded it. So I rebranded it because it used to be just called enrichment program. And I'm learning. Like I said, I'm not a businesswoman. So I'm a teacher. And um, we decided let's call this Young Patriots Academy and, and really get it out there. We have 75 lessons that are on demand. F finish your thought about readiness for college. Then I have to take a little break. Oh, sure. Yeah, we have I want to hear our thoughts on TikTok. What? Yeah, yeah we're going to get TikTok. We're going to get that. I, we we I, just sort of did. I mean. No, I want to make sure that kids are ready for when they go to college. Uh, a lot of a lot of students. I, I encourage the entrepreneur riot route. I encourage the trade school route. But there's still a lot of kids that are going to be going into our colleges. Most of our colleges are very left leaning. I would say they're radical. A lot of these colleges, and I want them to be prepared to face their Marxist professor and be able to have good counter arguments and be steady in the truth instead of having their whole worldview shaked and then they become some wannabe communist or whatever they these kids are turning out to be anyways um and so i know a lot of parents who have who regretted who regret putting their child in college because of Me how too. their child turned out yeah how how their child turned out and um so i want to reach them while they're young fifth through 12th grade is our enrichment program and they're totally ready. These kids are ready and they need it. And I also want them to influence their peers that are getting brainwashed and getting radicalized. So because that's peer to peer influence is huge in young people. And so if we have a group of kids that are ready to counter it and ready to convince their peers that have been brainwashed by the left, then we're 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 doing we're doing a lot of work in that. Holly is with us. The ex thinkexodus.org is the website. We're going to take a little break. Uh, you can follow Kali on X at Kali Fontania. I love her. <laughs> good. <laughs> I think I think everybody will. That's good. I'm and I'm 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 surprised your school is not sort of overwhelmed with with applicants. I, I, and, and I that, am terrible at sell, at selling myself. I need but to I think that's going to happen. There. I think yeah, that's going to happen. You. So prepare yourself. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll take a little break. Be right back after this. You could spend thousands of dollars and dozens of hours trying to look a few years younger, or you can skip all that and the hassle and go with what works, GenuCell Skin Care. GenuCell is the secret to better skin. Their products are made in the USA using a proprietary technology that combines a naturally effective base with non-GMO ingredients. In fact, you might have witnessed the astonishing effects of GenuCell during a recent unplanned moment of our show. When just a little GenuCell XV restored my skin within minutes right before your eyes. 
That is how fast these products work. I know I'm a snob about the products I use on my face. Everybody knows it. Every time I go to the dermatologist's office, they're just rows and rows of different creams. Retinols, vitamin C cream, under eye cream, night creams. Scrubs. And then when I get to the counter, they're overpriced. All kinds of products that you can all find at GenuCell.com. Susan and I love GenuCell so much, we've created our own bundle so you can try our favorite anti-wrinkle creams, correcting serums, under eye treatments. Say goodbye to those fine lines, forehead wrinkles, skin redness, even those dark under eye bags. Women and men of all skin types, GenuCell has got you covered. Order right now at GenuCell.com slash Drew to save 50%, actually over 50%, and you'll get a free luxury spa box plus free shipping. That is genucel.com slash Drew, G-E-N-U-C-E-L dot com slash D-R-E-W. Susan has talked about how she has been struggling with thinning hair and using Provia. I'm so happy because Provia is helping me grow longer, stronger, and shinier hair, especially up on top. Thank you, Provia. A reminder that Provia uses a safe natural ingredient called Procapo. It effectively targets the three main causes of premature hair thinning and hair loss. Scalp circulation the delivery of nutrients, and healthy hair follicle anchoring to the scalp. Provia guarantees more hair on your head than in the shower or on your comb. And right now, new customers save over 50% plus free shipping on Provia's introductory package at proviahair.com slash Drew. Every package includes a full 60-day supply of Provia serum for daily use, plus the Provia Super Concentrate for faster, more noticeable results. And every order includes your choice of a free gift. Provia works, guaranteed, or 100% of your money back. Don't wait. Order now to save an extra 10% and get free shipping at proviahair.com slash Drew. Not Dr. Drew, just Drew. That is P-R-O-V-I-A-H-A-I-R dot com slash Drew. We are back with uh, Kali Fontanilla, the... I think exodus.org is the website. Uh, let's bring her back. Uh, before we, I've got all these crazy questions I have for you, but um, the the one thing that's on people's mind right now is effect of social media and particularly what to do about TikTok. Uh, there's obviously some legislation being considered to restrict or eliminate and there's concern that whatever they do to TikTok will then bleed into other social media platforms. I, I mean, there's a lot of, it's complicated, let's be fair. What is your concern about TikTok? TikTok is, oh man, I hate TikTok. I'll say that. I, I am not a fan of that platform. I saw it come when I was a public school teacher and it was before adults were using TikTok. It started as just kind of teenagers were only using it. It was kind of mm -hmm. known as the teenage place, kind of like um, that other one, Snapchat. And now it's more adults are using it. And what I really didn't like about it was the fact that videos were like, kids were scrolling 15 second, 15 second, 15 second videos. And they're getting this input, 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 input. And I'm seeing that these kids are, especially Gen Z, this new generation, there's just, they lack a spark. They're kind of, mm. I'm like, where's your creativity? You know, I taught writing and and I, I noticed from the beginning of my teaching career to the end, it was really hard for my students to be creative, to, to write a creative story. And I would inspire them with like movie plots. I would tell them like about like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Someone came up with that idea and made millions, if not billions. Like what a silly, creative idea, right? And it was really mm. hard for me to get them to be creative because these kids are such consumers. They're consuming all day long. Consume, 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 consume. So when then it comes time to produce, they are like, Ugh. you know, and I even <laughs> see it in myself. When I'm watching too much stuff and I'm consuming too much, it's hard for me to produce. It's hard for me to write. It's hard for me to, you know, come up with creative ideas. So there's that. That was really annoying. And then it was the content that was on TikTok. The, the I blame TikTok for the whole non-binary movement. That whole, we did not have any students that, I had a couple trans, I had one trans student. I had one legitimate trans student in my career. And this is in California. And then all of a sudden, my last two years, not in my particular classroom, because I taught um, English learners and kids from Mexico, and they're more traditional, but in our school, we started getting these kids that were identifying as non-binary and uh, gender fluid and going by they, them pronouns. Someone who is a, teaches English, you know how annoying it is to try and refer to someone as they, them? Like, it's ridiculous, right? That's, I believe that's from TikTok. I think these kids got this stuff planted into them from TikTok. And um, you go on a TikTok and there's just all these different kinds of gender identities and they also uh, feed off of each other. 
and TikTok pushes them in the algorithm. So someone like me, I get banned nine times. I've had nine accounts, full accounts banned on TikTok. I get taken off, but people who are non-binary and all of this, you know, these multiple genders that are going on right now, they get pushed and they'll get huge followings, which that wouldn't have happened 10 years ago. And um, mm. so the influence of TikTok is really annoying. The, the fact that these kids are scrolling all day was annoying. And then now let's add the China factor to it. So I support a ban, just not done in this way, just not this actual legislation that's coming out. And that's the way our government works nowadays. They they put stuff in. They're like, oh, look, this seems great. And then they put stuff in and it's like, ah, we're losing our freedom. You know? Right. <laughs> that's right. It's no longer good. And and you say it's China. Are you worried about the monitoring uh, uh, and the sort of access to all our information or are you worried that China is actually doing the brainwashing and the manipulation through the algorithm? I would say the first one, not as much because we have China on our phones mm. right now. They're watching us all. I, right. We're already getting watched. We're, I, I mean, it's stupid, That's but right. we've, we've, we have traded our, our privacy for convenience. That's what we've all done. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, but the second one, I firmly believe they're trying to break us from within. They're trying to break us mm. from within. A weakened nation. We don't even, we have kids that aren't even fit for military anymore. They're having to lower the standards for the military now because our, this new generation, they're just soft. They're weak and they're having to lower the standards. Even with the lowered standards, there still isn't enough, a lot of kids that are fit for military that are, that are 18 right now that are, and, um, and so, yeah, I do believe that there is a psychological agenda because if you look at communist China, that's what they did to their own people. Why would they not do it to us? <laughs> mm -hmm. Especially the young people, especially the young people. And how does communism work? They they have their fingers in everything. So this idea that communist China doesn't, doesn't have any involvement, the government doesn't have any involvement in TikTok is a joke because that's what communism is. Right. Communism is the right. controlling of businesses and of, of the government control of these, of these different businesses. And so it's just, it's a... It's so bad. I, tick, the, the whole idea of TikTok is bad, but this ban is also, again, it's a Trojan horse. I think that it's going to bring in yeah. some other stuff that we may not want. And um, I think what needs to happen is, is we, we need parents to actually ban TikTok. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, like we need parents mm -hmm. to not let their kids go on TikTok. And well, this is something I've yeah. said for a long time is that parents should be, you know, I have a, I have a friend who's a psychologist and an attorney and she, she spends her whole day dealing with uh, the consequences on young women of social media. Uh, that, that's her expertise, literally. And she allows her kids like an hour a day. That's it. And it's highly monitored. And that's it. My my concern, of course, is that if you're really going to make that attempt, you're still going to have kids, you know, at school going, Ugh, you see, your, your buddies are showing you some crazy stuff. Uh, unless all the parents agree together that they're going to limit the access. It's, yeah, it's that's hard. so hard. But I remember saying something like that when my kids were in junior high About school. About drinking, having alcohol. And so we should sign a contract that we all agree it's not, and they, all the attorneys, all the attorney parents went, I'm not signing any contracts. I, uh, you'll, I'll get sued. I, I'm forget it. You know, I was like, okay, well, can we do something on behalf of our kids? You know, so it's our very, kids didn't get invited anywhere after that. It, it's very, <laughs> it's very hard to get parent groups, as you know, to do stuff, right? Well, with freedom, you have to have self-government. And we're becoming, I, I firmly believe this, this younger generation is becoming more ungovernable. They have, they have more mental health issues. They're more violent. They're uh, less productive. And so they're, that generation could possibly take away a lot of our freedoms because when things get crazy, like look at what happened in New York where they have to have military in the subways now because it's mm -hmm. people aren't governing themselves. You have to have self-government mm -hmm. for freedom. And so it, if we don't do something about it as individuals to stop this TikTok, then the government's going to come in and stop it. And that may not be the best solution. So Caleb is putting up there that, uh, you know, China, the Chinese government won't allow their kids to be exposed to TikTok, but they do have this other thing. And what is the, what is the purpose of this other platform, Caleb? Just it's it's a it's a different version behavior. of TikTok that people have noticed is does not have as much harmful content on it because a lot of the content mm -hmm. that they're piping into America through TikTok is not legal over in China. They don't even allow that. Right. 
Right, of course. Yeah, they're well, not getting uh, it, but we are. It, it's a, now, it's a, back to I, I, the scariest thing about it is just how, how well it works. It's just, it's a very smart app. Their algorithm knows if I don't spend time on it, the only way I spend time on it is I literally, my, my TikTok feed is my wife has an open direct message to me. She sends me TikToks and every time it reaches 50 TikToks, I go watch the one mm. she's filtered for me. Because I know once I go into that scrolling, you, you get stuck in it. it. They know how to mm -hmm. serve you stuff that keeps you on that app. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I have another question about the homeschool. I like Instagram. Well, Sorry, I just had to throw that out there. It has its own. It, it may yeah, be the only option. It will have its know, own At the same issues. time, I, I do think we need to be clear also that our American apps are doing the same stuff. Like it's just, right, this is so just one say, that's controlled yeah. by a foreign power. So it's, it, yeah. we're doing the same thing a here. A communist country. Uh, just remember, a communist country. Yeah, but there's, there are forces afoot here that... Who knows, you know? Um, and now, the, I guess Michigan is trying to uh, sort of bureaucratically encumber home schools. Are you, are you familiar with this movement? Yeah, so what they want is they want the parents to register with the state, homeschool parents to register with the state and be accountable to them on what they're teaching their child in the classroom. I mean, in their home classroom. <laughs> and um, the parents are not having it. They're like, why do we have to register to the state? This is the whole point of homeschooling is to not have you guys involved. And mm -hmm. what bothers me the most about this is that the government should be the one, the, these government schools should be the ones reporting to <laughs> the parents. This, about this is a funny, on. look at look at that, yeah. look at that cartoon. It's very <laughs> funny. Homeschool oh, kids so are not properly socialized, and it shows uh -huh. the kids in these bubbles, essentially, which is what they did. So they homeschool did kids have always outperformed public school students. If you look at the, the statistics on homeschool kids, they they do better mm -hmm. in college, they do better on standardized testing, um, and th so this idea is just more government control. And like I said, the government should be the ones reporting to parents about what's going on in our schools, because if parents got a printout every week of all the violent or creepy incidents that happened on campus i think a lot of them would be would pull their children from public schools yeah like if you yeah. got a if you if you got a printout at the end of like if you got an email on friday and was like okay these were the this was the amount of this was the amount of weapons that were found on students this was the amount of fights this was I'm like what do you I'm like where am i putting my kid but they don't they hide it yeah you know even at my school yeah. my student had i had a student that had a full police sized taser I had a student that had a knife, you know, I had, a, I had um, a student that was high on some sort of crazy drug. I don't even know because there's these new drugs now that are harder to recognize, but he was just off the Richter and they were trying to put him back into my class. And I was like, mm. this child is on drugs. He keep him out of my classroom. He is not safe. And he was a big kid too. I'm like, keep him out of my classroom. Mm -hmm. And they were like, no, he's fine. We looked at him. And I'm like, no, he can't even walk straight. Like, <laughs> so it's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, the government should be reporting to parents instead of the other way around. Well, that, that's a general thing I've been thinking about lately. I'm, I noticed in some of these, uh, government hearings and the federal government hearings lately the the uh, government officials on i'm not done yet I, i'm it's my time you're you gonna you are you uh, did i ask you a question i i felt like everyone should stand up and go hey hey you work for me shut up i'm the boss i you i'm exactly. the citizen you work for me i it really disgusts me when i see them holding privilege over the citizens who are their employer who for whom they serve uh, you serve at the liberty at the at the at the discretion of us the citizens they, just, they need to start behaving that way. Servant leadership, and that is so important. That's important yeah. with all with all businesses. I mean, uh, just being a servant leader. That's the way this country was set up. You're not supposed to be a lording over people, like you said. Yeah, it, 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 things have gone really weirdly side, sideways. I, I, I'm interested in your sort of political evolution. Uh, you, you've clearly gone in a certain direction. Is, have you always been that way, or is it? Uh, something that we woke up all of a sudden or kept going you're, you're tell, tell me that that part of your story well i'm still registered independent i was a democrat registered mm. democrat i'm still independent mm. and um probably will never register republican just because i don't want to be tied to a certain group especially if one turns mm. sour like democrats democrats of today are very different than the democrats of the 90s my grandma was a democrat oh, she yeah. was Oh, yeah. I was so close with her. I remember in Santa Cruz, this is a very liberal area. I remember in Santa Cruz, 
they used to have the flags up on 4th of July in all the neighborhoods. You would walk, you would drive mm-hmm. through, I, you remember this, Memorial Day, 4th of mm-hmm. July, flags were up everywhere. I miss that time. I miss seeing that. I miss seeing, you know, patriotism in our country, patriotism for our country in that way. Like it doesn't really even happen. Mm-hmm. Um, even just, even in red states, people aren't putting up their flags like they used to. There's just this good, um, good old classic Americana, you know? Um, mm. And my grandma had Republican friends and they got along fine. But I feel like the muck of these, of, of the Democrats and who they are now, you can't stay away from it. They, they force it on you. Like when I was a public school teacher, you have to, sh- you know, you have to use these pronouns on kids or you're, they're, ch- you know, when they decide to change their gender and you don't use their correct pronoun or whatever, they're, you can get fired. Or you have to wear you, a mask. You, listen, mask. it's a hate. It's a hate crime. You could have difficult. You yeah. could have a, a criminal yeah, problem. Yeah, exactly. And it, it, mm-hmm. it, you you have to wear a mask, or you can't show up on campus. And so it started coming really into my into my personal life. And that's when I was like, all right, I'm definitely right leaning. Like <laughs> these people have gone crazy. I am right leaning, and I consider myself a conservative. So I am a con- uh, I am conservative, independent. But the Democrats, man, it's just, it's a facade. And and I really bought mm. into the whole, they were for Black people, they were for poor people, and that's just a joke. They really aren't. <laughs> They're for their mm. wallets and for China <laughs> and war. <laughs> it seems I like, at least they become, they be, they become that. And I, and the right has been there too. So I worry yes. about their extremism. I, so I, I'm, I'm an independent also. And, and I, you, you do strike me a little bit libertarian also. Um, right. Isn't that, uh, I don't know. Uh, I agree. I don't think drugs should be illegal. I don't, I think drugs should be illegal, like hard drugs. So I don't you're, believe, you're, it's the, con, you're yeah. conservative. Yeah. Prostitution. Yeah. And, and, I think that should be illegal. Like, uh-uh. okay. So you want yeah. to live in a certain kind of society so, and you want, you do you want think there's some that. Democrats who are not so like there's different variations. Like there's the way left Democrat and sort of the moderate Democrat, but they just don't want to be anything other than Democrat. No, we know people like I that. Think yeah. been, I don't know. I don't, there's very few left because a lot of them have left. Mm. I mean, mm. um, I, everyone I True. know. And I do think that the ones that are still buying into it, they're a little crazy. Uh, mm. You have to kind of be crazy. To still, to, especially this last four years with the Black Lives Matter, with the, with the COVID. Um, you just really got brainwashed by the mainstream media with hating Trump. And just, I mean, it's just, it's irrational hate towards that man. You know? Well, yeah, well I, 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 I'm, I'm sort of mystified by that too. I, I, I guess see it just all as sort of this, the, the people that seem to hate him the most are the most like him. So yeah, if, you, if, you, exactly. if you're, you know, the more sort of narcissistic you are, the more bombastic yeah. you are, the more you're going to hate this guy, which is really an interesting kind of dynamic. But uh, what, what was I going to say about, uh, Oh, the this the the part that you that in your in your um, Patriots campaign that fascinates me is teaching history, right? Uh, you're trying to teach history as as it happened. Uh, just get get kids the facts, and I I it's so weird to me. It's, it seemed like history was going that way, right? It was more sort of his, his, historiography. You know, you looked at primary documents and tried to understand what it was like to live in that time and look at it from all angles and things. And then that went away very quickly. Are you trying to teach that or are you trying to treat a, teach a contrary narrative to combat, you know, fixed narratives that are out there? I would say it's a little of both, but I want the students to come to their own conclusion on the contrary narrative. Yeah, you get what right. I'm saying? So like the yes, Quaker you lesson, need they do documents. see, yeah, they do see primary yeah. documents. Like they look at the log yeah. of the Quakers that were yeah. put in prison for nine, 10 years for helping a runaway slave. Um, that is so yeah. important. That type of, and, and what's sad is that it's being erased. Our, it's harder to access this stuff now. Um, mm. th- there's more control over where you can, you know, where you can find these sources, because I do a lot of research because I also do some writing work for the Capital Research Center and they do a lot of um, research. And it's getting harder to to find these firsthand documents and and um, the archives of them. And lo- it, it's it's uh, I wish people would make it more accessible for 
for young people, but that they want to they want to erase our history and write a new narrative yeah. because our history is beautiful. I mean, it's it's got its flaws, of course, but Ameri- the founding of America is amazing. Yeah, it's fascinating and, and it's complicated and, and we should look at it from all sides. Yeah. Um, but I was just thinking about the excesses of the right and the left and you were a Loveline fan. You know, we were fighting the right very hard I, in, in being able to that. do that show, yes. you know? And so I, I have distrust of the excesses on every side whenever I come around it because uh, it's it's always irrational and it's always emotional. Like I, the thing I encountered on the right was I was advocating very strongly for morning after contraceptives and I and they kept insisting it was an abortive pill. I kept saying, no, no, but, but by the way, if you're going to take issue with that, what about IUDs? Why aren't you freaking out about IUDs? Those actually do cause abortions. And because you don't know your damn biology, you, you, you're, you're making irrational cases for something that could reduce abortion. But anyway, I, you know, that, that, that people's insanity and lack of uh, uh, sort of education never, never cease to, to disappoint me. I have a question. Yeah. How are your kids affected by AI? Like, is it, when I first started doing like chat GPT, I would put something in and then it was written pre-COVID and then it was, they didn't give any facts. They, it was written the way, I guess China wanted it to sound, but, um, no, how are, Google wanted it to sound. Yeah. I mean, they're, you know, Microsoft they're, wanted they're, it to sound. they're writing white people out of history, but, um, how are your kids affected by that yet? My current students, I wouldn't say no. I would say no. Um, but I will say that I have written articles about it because I know what I keep track of what the teachers unions are doing and they're trying to accept accept it and just basically mm. say it's a writing tool. And so these kids, now 30% of our college students are using AI to help write their papers. And I would say it's even higher than mm. that. And so this mm. is going back to the fact that, it's, again, destroyed creativity, destroyed production because now these kids are having a robot or whatever AI produce it for them. And um yeah, I, I I'm just so worried. I'm just so worried that we're gonna have a generation of dunces at the end of all this because mm. they won't be coming up with their own thoughts anymore. And I didn't see it yet because it, it didn't become a thing. Uh, AI didn't become a thing in the classroom until about I would say the last three years. Um and I used to always have my students handwrite a lot of stuff. But then we mm. don't have kids that are able to write in uh, because we don't teach handwriting anymore in third and fourth grade like cursive and so it's i don't know our our we're we're in a very funky situation with our public education until, unless we get it together it, what I'm, I'd be curious in your thoughts. What what should we be doing? You mentioned your the white teacher that could stood up and declared his white privilege and how that was like weird for you. Uh, what, there there is such a thing as ethnocentrism. It exists everywhere, frankly, on all sides. But but it, it there has been kind of a certain ethnocentrism in this country, sort of European facing, sort of white facing, and it just has been. And that's been you know, and, and you can. Speaking of primary documents, I I chuckle. I found one with a, with um, Benjamin Franklin railing on the lack of racial purity in in Philadelphia, and that the, this this darker group was coming in. He was talking about non Saxon Germans. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna adulterate the population. So there, there's been this weird thing in the United States. Is is, is should we just look at it, do, you know, accept it? It's a thing, and and not vilify it, or do we have to? I mean, it's affected people. It's hurt people. It has. What, what do we do with it? Our country was 80% white until the early, early 1980s. So there's that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it just was. That's right. Yeah. It just was that way. Yeah. I don't think I, there's ethnic, having pride in your ethnicity is very different than having a color lens, you know, where you're really focusing on the color of people's skin. Uh, you know, having pride in your Irish heritage or your, yeah, or your Jamaican heritage or whatever. That's that's cool. Mm-hmm. That's culture. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. But this whole color lens that we're bringing back that was going away in the 90s, mm. we're bringing it mm-hmm. back now. We're having labeling Black-owned businesses. We're having Black sections on Netflix and Black sections on Disney+. Plus and our students are being, you know, I, like, for example, I got that gift where I had the I love being Black sticker. Are white people allowed to do that right now? So it's it, we're we're basically repeating the mistakes of our past, and it's not going to end well. This is not going. To, it's it's 
And focusing on color is so silly to me because we're all different. What do you do with an albino black person? That's white. <laughs> you know, I don't, I can't even say they're not a black person. They're an albino. It, they're it, African. It, yeah. It, like, <laughs> I don't know what they are. It's odd. It's the whole thing is is odd if you if you just like people. You know what I mean. If you like people, it's it's a very odd thing to be thinking about. But uh, you said it's going to end badly. What what is your fantasy? What do you worry about? I'm seeing hatred. I'm seeing way more hatred than I for for skin color than I've ever seen ever witnessed in my life. Going 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 all all directions. Both ways now. Yeah, both ways. Yeah. Uh, um, so I have a satire character. I use the Black Lives Matter mask and I make up the satire character and I mock the left, basically. And she's gone viral a lot, actually. People don't know it's me, but I make these crazy things. Even Ben Shapiro reacted to her and thought she was a real leftist. I receive hate from both sides. So I know what it's like mm. to get hate from the right. I know what it's like to get hate from the left. The left was calling me racial slurs all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. No racial slurs from the right. I get things like, you need to be fired because I pretend to be a teacher a woke teacher. Mm. And I'll get comments mm. like, you need to be fired. You're crazy. Get you away from kids. That's what I was getting from the right. This last, right. I would say seven or eight months, I've been receiving some racial slurs. And I'm like, oh, oh. it's it's because they keep pushing, pushing, pushing all of this. I, w- I call it black idolatry right now. I mean, that's where we're headed, where, you know. It, you, it, you, it's that. And I feel like the uh, October 7th Flip things a little bit too the the anti Israel stuff so I, I don't know yeah, something, it did something else true, it, put, true. It, it, a, it added another flavor to this whole thing that exactly. unleashed some nastiness on all sides nastiness yeah. yes yeah. and so it's sad it's really heartbreaking for me to see this because what what are our, our kids going to inherit what kind of world are they going to inherit a Jim Crow South world but in reverse. Because that's what's happening right now. And people don't want to talk about it. If you even talk about this stuff, you get hate. You get all kinds of, it's, you know, if you expose the fact that white people are being discriminated against right now, legitimately, like on the books, there's companies and corporations that have policies Mm -hmm. where if there's a black applicant and there's a white applicant and they have the same thing on their resume, you take the black Mm -hmm. applicant. Or or if the white applicant Mm -hmm. even even has more qualifications, you take the black applicant. That kind of stuff is, Mm -hmm. it's never going to end well. You know, it's technically um, illegal. Yeah, it, it it's technically be. illegal, but it's not. It it it, yeah. it is it, it is is it it is illegal to discriminate on the basis of race unless it's white. Then it's yeah. okay. Exactly. And, and exactly. you know, that's that's the world we're in right right now. I think it really stuff. it's forcing what what just really quick. It's forcing a lot of young white people into entrepreneurship, which is interesting. I, I don't know what you know. It'll be interesting to see where where that sort of goes. What, what do you want to ask, Caleb? Yeah, I'm curious if, you know, you've noticed, you said there's been a large increase in the hate that you're receiving online. Does it seem like that sudden increase, especially after, what was it, October 7th, especially after that, does it seem like it's a lot of AI bot driven replies Mm. to you? Like they really ramped it up because they see, oh, we can split people up more. Now we can have Israel versus Palestine as another thing that's also white versus black. That was the, the narrative. They were really able to divide people up for a long time about that. Now they've kind of moved mm. on to something else that can divide people. Does it seem like were they are like people that actually followed you, real humans that followed you, that turned on you, or do they seem like it's like a new crew of or, people or, that don't even watch you? Or could you tell? Or could you tell? Ah, uh, that's a good question. I, you know, I think yeah. most of the hate I've received is humans because I'll check their profile and I'll look at them and like I've had this. There was a guy that ran an after school program and he called me a house n word. Um, mm. usually the bots kind of have a similar, they'll say the same thing. Like they'll, be, they'll have like a flag with free Palestine over and over and over again. Um, when it's really <laughs> unique, yeah. When it's really unique, that's when I'm like, okay, that's probably a real person. Or if it's a DM, mm. it's probably a real person. I really haven't seen an influx of bots on my account, but, um, like I've had people make whole videos on YouTube saying horrible things about you know, me, and that's not a bot. You know what I'm saying? So it's, um, I think there's a little what is, bit of what that. Is their criti- what, what is their criticism? I, what, what is because the I speak, because I speak against critical race theory and Black Lives Matter. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, Black Lives Matter, the movement, it's based on critical race theory because what it does is it applies guilt to the collective. And that's exactly what critical race theory is, is mm. it's not just one cop who's a bad cop, right? It's all cops. It's not just one white person who's a racist. It's all white people. It's not just one black person who's the victim. It's all black black people. And speak when you speak against that and you and you you 
basically destroy that stuff, you get a lot of hate, a lot of hate. And I, I get a lot of it from people that look like me and I get a lot of it from white people and it's, it's, um, depressing, but it's, but it is what it is. And I, I'm seeing out of curiosity. Is it, is it, is it more women than men just out of curiosity? Uh, I would say it depends on the video. So like I did a video mm. where I basically mocked, I, I, it went viral, but I said, you know, if white women acted like black women during Black History Month. And I said, I have my white girl magic shirt on and I have, you know, um, white is king. I was like this. And I was like, uh, yeah, I was like, I, I'm so tired of seeing Beyonce with blonde straight hair because that's cultural pro- appropriation, right? Just basically, <laughs> and it was like a joke, right? And man, the hate I got for that video, just a 20 second video. It was like, you hate yourself and you you don't realize we've been through 400 years of oppression and this is our time to shine. And I'm like, we can't repeat the mistakes of the past. You know, if, if, if it's only mm. one skin color that's allowed to do this and white people aren't allowed to do this, this is repeating the mistakes of the past. And you just, I'm telling you that it's, people get addicted to that victim mindset because it's an excuse. It's an excuse to be a loser. That's what I call it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it has been a pleasure to talk to you, Kali. Thank you so much. Thank you for the work you're doing. I, I Whatever we can do to help promote your school, we're, we're happy to do it. So uh, give them all the particulars. Where, where can they see the videos? Where can they check the school out? Good. Yeah, I, we have your ex up there, Kali uh, yeah. Fontanilla. Go ahead. So Kali Fontanilla on all the major platforms. I'm on Instagram. I'm on YouTube. I'm on Facebook. X and TikTok still, but yeah, even though I'm on my 10th account. Um, but you could check out the school at think thinkexodus.org. And that is where you can see the enrichment program or Young Patriots Academy that's $29 a month. And then we also have a fully accredited K through 12 program that does it takes does take state vouchers. So if you qualify in your state for a voucher, our K through 12 fully accredited program could be of no cost. But um, but yeah, I I'm on all those major platforms. And I would love to come back and talk with you, Dr. Drew, because this has been awesome. All right. We will mm-hmm. keep in touch with you. I assure you. Thanks, Kali. And uh, coming up, we have, like I said, we have Greg Lukianoff from FIRE. He is, uh, it'd be interesting to talk to him about free speech. They're, they're monitoring the institutions very carefully that are transgressing on that First Amendment privilege. Uh, want to put the more, uh, what else coming up there? We, I know we have uh, Peter McCullough coming in. We just got a bunch of great guests coming up. There we are. Warren Smith with um, Lukianov. Dray- so many, the guy from um, Viva and Barnes is coming up on the second. I do uh, well, that's too Barnes many. from. Uh, so uh, 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 Viva's partner, uh, attorney, uh, I forget his first name, Barnes is uh, uh, Richard Barnes. And uh, he should be very interesting. And D- Drea DiMatteo will be in studio here with me. I guess I'm going to be wearing some of her swag. It, it, we ordered something. When is that? That is on March. That's next Thursday. Oh, okay. It's a week from today. Um, I might be alive. You're going to be fine. This is going to be fine. I'm she's, getting she's a getting a tooth implant. A, yeah. She's freaked out. About I'm getting it. a screw in my jaw tomorrow, and not the fun kind. <laughs> Why don't we just leave it at that? I appreciate Kali. Yeah, right, exactly. I appreciate Kali being in with us today. Uh, I'm watching all you guys out on the uh, restream and, of course, on the Rumble Rants. You seem very engaged by her, her uh, presentation today. It's interesting. Um, we also have Salty Cracker. She hit coming. the nail on the head. Yeah, it's very interesting uh, talking to her. We have Salty Cracker coming in. Uh, I know he's uh, on the on the on deck there somewhere. So you have all your all your all the hits are coming back. And uh, do please do support the people that support us. Uh, again, I said I had the emergency aid kit here in the little ad. I have the emergency aid kit here with me. Did you find the one we took to Vegas? No, we we take the travel. I kit think with it. Us. I think we left it. No, there. No, I put it in myself. No, no, no. Not unless somebody took it out. It wasn't in my bag. I, how could that be? Maybe I, maybe I put it in you. mine. Maybe I stuck it. It might be in mine. Probably. So, uh, all right, I'll find it. But it's all the stuff that I give my own patients when they travel. There's things you should have when you travel. It's just the way it goes. Whether it's nausea medicine, diarrhea medicine, uh, things for infections, skin infections, sinus infections. Yeah, but also like infections. if you get sick, you get a really bad flu or a bug, Not and then it's flu. been a couple we, of weeks, well, and we like and that. you start getting a sinus infection, and you can't get you to We're an emergency covered. room, or you do urgent no care, and you don't have a doctor. You, to go to all those you just have that, you know, pull out that little Z pack, and boom. Yeah, all better. 
All right, everybody. Thank you all for being here, and we will have a good weekend, and we will see you again on Tuesday. Uh, let me just double-check that the time is our usual time. I'm fairly certain it is. Yes, it is 3 o'clock with uh, Greg Lukianoff. We'll see you then. Ta-ta. Ask Dr. Drew is produced by Caleb Nation and Susan Pinsky. As a reminder, the discussions here are not a substitute for medical care, diagnosis, or treatment. This show is intended for educational and informational purposes only. I am a licensed physician, but I am not a replacement for your personal doctor, and I am not practicing medicine here. Always remember that our understanding of medicine and science is constantly evolving. Though my opinion is based on the information that is available to me today, some of the contents of this show could be outdated in the future. Be sure to check with trusted resources in case any of the information has been updated since this was published. If you or someone you know is in immediate danger, don't call me, call 911. If you're feeling hopeless or suicidal, call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 800-273-8255. You can find more of my recommended organizations and helpful resources at drdrew.com slash help. The parallel economy has empowered us to care for our health, well-being, as well as longevity. Likewise, for us pet parents who now have a place to go when it comes to keeping the family dogs, cats, even horses in the best shape possible. As a dog dad, I'm thrilled to be working with Pet Club 24-7, a company founded by two guys who lost dogs to serious conditions, including cancer. Pet Club 24-7 has an incredible array of products, including a line of supplements for humans, such as the Inforce Plus Corollius Versicolor and Inforce Corollius Versicolor with Reishi. My friend and colleague, Christina Ferrari, a cancer survivor herself, swears by it. When I was diagnosed, the doctor in the emergency room told me, you have two years to live. Oh boy. Along with the stem cell, I took these. I have been in remission for eight years now. For dogs, mush puppy treats are a fan favorite. Rex, you want to, oh boy. Oh, <laughs> he came right. Oh, there he is. They are also made with the Coriolis Versicolor Mushroom, which supports their immune system, according to hundreds of clinical studies. Here's Kristen Ludlow, National Vice President. That strain does matter. We do have the most potent strain, and we also extract it in a proprietary way. And that's why we've been having such wonderful experiences with these products. Mush puppies are made here in the U.S. There are no fillers. It's not addicting. Your dog can't accidentally overdose. Go to drdrew.com slash pet club 24-7 for a discount off the list price. That is drdrew.com, P-E-T-C-L-U-B 247, pet club 247.